So if you've just bought yourself a Radio Master Zorro, and why not, it's an awesome and very popular transmitter, it's really important to calibrate your stick endpoints in Betaflight or iNav. And you only need to do this once, and when it's set, it's set. Betaflight relies on specific values for the endpoints and the midpoints on each channel, and these aren't necessarily the same as the values that you might see on the transmitter display. It's all designed to expect 1000 as the minimum value, 1500 as the midpoint and 2000 as the maximum value. And if these are off, you may end up with odd drifting on your quad or it may not arm or reach full deflection on roll pitch or yaw. And you may not be able to get full throttle. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This is YouTube, you know what to do subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. I'll show you how to check and set the endpoints in a minute, but first it's worth calibrating the sticks on the Zorro, especially if it's a new radio or you've just changed your gimbals. So press and hold the sys button to get to the tools page and then press page right until you get to page six, which is the hardware page. And then all you've got to do is follow the instructions. So if you press return and press enter to start. So we need to set the sticks at center. You can use these little on-screen indicators here to see what you're doing. And then press enter again. And then just move the sticks around right up to their endpoints. You can see these little animated things going around here and then press enter that's it simple sticks are now calibrated so before we start a bit of background beta flight and most other flight controller software is designed to work with certain max and min control values for each channel and in the case of beta flight it's a thousand to two thousand like this now these aren't going to be the actual values output by your transmitter, whatever you're using. You can change these beta flight values to match those on your radio, but it's lots of work. And it's generally much easier to change the values of your radio outputs to work with beta flight using its subtrims. And this is going to be true of any other radio you're using. I've generally found that radios tend to have control values in the range of about 950 at the bottom end up to 2011 at the top end and then the middle is somewhere around 1500 plus or minus 5 or 10. So what we're trying to do is to wind these values back from here to the values that beta flight is expecting as its maximum. Now if you find that these values are way off what I've shown here, this might be because the transmitter sticks need calibrating or your trims aren't properly centered. Now you can connect your quad to the computer with the USB cable. Telemetry recovered. There we go. And let's connect to the quad and go to the receiver page and just waggle the sticks around and make sure that it is actually talking which is all good. Now if you notice here we've got the midpoints this one is at 1508 and pitch and yaw are at about 1500. You'll notice there's a slight roll or pitch not quite sure which that's probably roll so if you took off now and just left your sticks in the middle position you're going to get a slight roll to the left to the right so we need to calibrate the endpoints and the midpoint so they start at 1000 the midpoint is 1500 and the top end is 2000 so if we have a look at this roll at its minimum that's 997, at its maximum is 2020, and its middle it's all off, that's 
something around 1508. Now the important thing is it doesn't really matter what the outputs are showing on your radio or on the screen. What's important is what is displaying in beta flight because those are the values that are being delivered to the flight controller. That's the important bit. So that's the easy way to calibrate things. So if you go to the model setting, just long press model and page across until you get to page seven, which is the outputs. And we are going to first of all, check channel one. So if you press enter, edit, and yes, I can see why that's rolling because this is at 1508. So if we look and see what's happening in beta flight at the moment, if I press return to edit that and scroll that down, you can see it's coming down in beta flight. There we are, that's 1500, so that's spot on there. So we just press return. The actual value that's displayed on here, you can completely ignore. Just make sure that it says 1500 in the beta flight configurator. So that's fine, that's all looking very good. Now let's have a look at the minimum. So that is 988. So we need to adjust the minimum. So if we go up here to min, press return, pull that all the way over and we need to start winding this back until beta flight shows us 1000. There we go. Make sure you push the stick all the way over to the left. Don't go mad but just make sure it's where you would normally be. Fantastic. Press return and now let's go down to max and that is saying 2011 so we need to oops press return and wind this down until that comes down to 2000 yes dog what is it <laughs> she's telling me I'm doing the right thing there we go fantastic press return to make sure you save those so if I now move this Fully left, it's on 1,000. Fully right, it's on 2,000. And in the middle, it's 1,500. All I need to do is repeat the same thing with pitch and yaw and throttle. So let's do that now. So there we go, we've got all our sticks calibrated. They're centre point, they're all at about 1500, a little bit more difficult to spot on the throttle, but 1000, 2000, your is 1000, 2000. Now you can do the same thing with the switches. It's not quite so important because you can adjust the actual point that your switches work using the mode setting in beta flight but it's always a good idea to set them up so they are working as you expect them to so aux one that's working between a thousand and two thousand aux two that's all perfect in fact i've only got those oh no i think i've got yes i've got aux three mapped as well i think i may have done one of the buttons on the back yes i have just do it for each of the switches or the sticks or whatever you're going planning on using on the radio. And that's it. Very simple. So now I know that when I go out flying, I can just take off and these sticks are all set and ready to go. Hopefully that's shown you why setting these channel endpoints is really important and it's pretty easy once you know how to. As always, thanks for watching and if you found this helpful, why not subscribe and maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel. There's all the usual social media links in the description. And I'll see you next time.